reading is Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to Beauty Basics 101. So I was chatting with you guys a little bit earlier before I had was recording this. Now we'll record it for anybody that missed it and can watch it after. So you're hopefully either watching this live or afterwards, which will be fun. So um, you'll be able to incorporate a lot of the things you're learning um, into your daily routine. Um, I want to cover a little bit about tonight and the reason why I like to do these webinars. Usually I like to do them in person. Um, but like I was saying earlier, the nice thing about doing them online is that we get to have people from all over the country and not just in Wisconsin where I'm from. So we have somebody on from Texas, I know for sure. And I don't know if there's others on from other places. Feel free to put in the chat where you're from. Um, I know there's lots from Wisconsin, but maybe we'll get a few from other areas as well. Um, so I, that's the one thing I really do feel is so fun about these webinars is that we do have the opportunity to reach so further, so much further than just in our backyard. Of course, I love to do these in person, um, but I, I am getting used to doing them more online for you guys. So I'm gonna do my best to give you guys as much information and education, um, which with something that I personally love in the beauty industry. Um, so I'm gonna introduce myself really quickly and my background and may, why I'm talking to you guys today. Um, so my name is Jenny Fries and I'm the owner and founder of Starstruck Artistry. So I have a background in the beauty industry for over 10 years now. It's gonna be going on 11 years in October. Um, I work, still work two days a week behind the chair in a salon doing cuts and colorings and all of that. It's a salon that I worked at um, when I first started apprenticing. I apprenticed there got my license and continue to work there and it'll be 11 years in October. So I truly love it. It's my passion. And about two years ago, I opened Starstruck Artistry. So I know a lot of you have, um, are watching this because you follow my page on Starstruck or you got a message from me or whatever that looks like um, to jump on. So um, I love, part of Starstruck Artistry is education. Um, I really love educating people and teaching them and um, empowering them to do makeup and hair and all that good stuff and learn how to do it and that anybody can do it as well. So um, that's what, what I really love to do at Starstruck. Um, how Starstruck was born was because of my passion for special occasion hair and makeup. So I really love to do styling of hair and makeup applications. So I do a lot of bridal parties. We work with a team of about 10 um, independent artists now. Um, that we go around and do bridal parties, we do photo shoots, we do all sorts of things. We're based out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, um, but do travel. I've gone to, personally, I've gone to Mexico and New York to do weddings, so it's been really fun um, and great experiences as well. And I get to meet the coolest people um, and it, it doesn't just, and I get to see the people over and over because they'll keep referring different weddings and it's really kind of neat to see um, how that all folds out as well. So that's what we do at Starstruck Artistry. Um, but what I'm really here, you guys, tonight is to talk to you guys about the beauty basics. Um, how, how I got started, how um, the, um, let me just check. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure everybody was able to get on here. Um, and how I got started, why I'm passionate about it, um, the cosmetic line that I love and fell in love with um, within Starstruck Artistry as well. So that being Motives Cosmetics, which is the sign behind me here. Um, I like to brand myself behind Motives at Starstruck. Um, but what Motives Cosmetics, why it's so different and what really sets it apart when people ask me, you know, what makes this cosmetic line so different than anything else that's out there? And what I like to say is the reason behind it is part of a parent company called MarketAmericaShop.com. So one of their divisions is Motives Cosmetics. And the biggest thing with MarketAmericaShop.com and Motives is that it's a product broker. So it's a product brokerage company, which means if you've never heard that term, um, we don't manufacture any of our products. We actually broker with other manufacturers to get the products. So we're able to get work with dozens of manufacturers just within the cosmetic industry and get the best of the best of each product and then ex put the label on it exclusively for us. We have um, um, exclusive lines and exclusive formulas just for us. Um, you know, that represent Motives Cosmetics. It's being, it's able to be used in salons and spas. It's very high quality, cruelty-free, gluten-free, 
Um, the list goes on and on. It's the standards are in you know Europe and Canada as well as the U.S. So um, we really kind of are able to use it on everyone, everybody, everyone and anyone um, is why I really truly fell in love with it because it was hard for me to find a line that I could retail to you guys as my clients and my guests in my studio and the salon. Um, I wanted to be able to have a really high quality line that held up all day long that um, my clients loved, that was good for their skin. Their skin could actually breathe through it and that could actually um, be used on the everyday woman or you know, for a high-end fashion shoot. And I found that with Modus Cosmetics, every piece of that came together with it. So that's why I really, truly fell in love with it. And that's why I'm going to, that's the line that I'm going to be talking about. That's the line I'm going to be using when I'm going over these techniques. Um, but remember that a lot of these techniques can be used with whatever you've got at home. Um, one of the things I really love to do, and we can do it virtually, we can do it, um, you know, in person as well, if you're in the area is you could come in, do, I like to call them like makeup mixers. And you can come in and actually just get, um, we'll go through what you have, see what we can use and implement. Maybe some, some things are expired. Maybe um, you need to get some new stuff, whatever that looks like, we can kind of mix and match and fit it all in together. So that's what I really love about what I do is just educating and getting you guys to just try something new um, with that. So with that all being said, kind of the overview, and I think everybody's jumped on by now as well, um, is that I really want to start with the basics, which is a little bit of skincare. I'm not going to jump too much into it, but just a little bit because it is very important. Now, when I was thinking about skincare, I work with about five different skincare lines in Starstruck, um, and they're all throughout marketamericashop.com. So there's about five or six different skincare lines that we can choose from. We can cater to our clients that with what works best. So that's what I really love about it. I picked a handful of the ones that I have in my personal makeup um, arsenal kit, um, if you want to call it that. So that, that are really good, that they're professional products that um, they're on the go. I like to throw them in my bag for travel. They're really nice. Um, they're going to give you that flawless professional look and that skincare prep that you're going to need. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the Lumiere de Vie Micellular Cleanser. So this is not in place of a cleanser. I would still recommend use your daily cleanser. You know, I talk to a lot of women that, you know, I, we go through their skincare routine. I'm like, what is your skincare routine? What do you do? What does it look like? And some don't do anything at all. Maybe they're not even cleansing. Maybe they're just using their body wash over. And um, just start with a really good cleanser. I have multiple to choose from. And some, you know, the price point varies as well. So not all my products are, are very high priced. They're all over, which I really like because we can cater just about everybody too with that. Um, so don't worry that these prices, you will be very surprised when you look at, they're very affordable as well. But this is the micellular cleanser. So what I like to do with this is just use like a cotton ball or cotton swab and rub this all off. Um, this is kind of nice if you just need that prep before you're going to put your makeup on um, or if you didn't get a chance to wash it off and you want to use this, um, what this does is this cleanser, actually, it's going to hydrate your skin. It's going to have a lot of skincare properties to it, um, but it's also going to act like a magnet and pull out any of that dirt or makeup off of your face. So this has a lot of really awesome technology behind it. And until I used it for the first time, I really didn't understand it until I used it and realized how clean my face felt and how wonderful. So I keep this, um, it's a glass, really nice glass jar. So you would have to be careful when you travel with it. You could add it, put it into another container if you needed to, that was plastic for travel. Um, but I just love this and I keep it in my makeup kit for all my clients. When I go to weddings, in case there is leftover makeup on their face that I need to get off, um, this is my go-to. Now next, um, after you cleanse, you're going to want to tone. So with toning, I kind of used to always skip this step, um, which I didn't really realize how important it was. So what a toner actually does is it's going to balance your pH of your skin. So anytime you're putting anything on your face, anytime you're putting, you're washing your face, if you put water on, your pH is changing. So when you're doing that, it's not, when you go to put the makeup on, it's not going to adhere. It's not going to lay as nice. It's not going to stay on as long. Um, if your skin is not set and prepped and toned um, correctly, so what I love is the pH balancer by Skin Intelligence. This again, this is um, the Skin Intelligence line is super affordable. It's really good for just about anybody, um, and this is awesome. This pH balancer has so many other benefits besides this, but um, the just 
a toner um, and make sure when you're getting a toner, I'm not talking about like an astringent or anything like that. Get like a really nice, good um, quality toner. Like I said, this one's really affordable. Um, you just shake it up, spray it all over, um, and it's going to prep your skin for the makeup and help your makeup last longer. So I'm telling you, this is in my makeup kit. I'm doing a little bit of skincare on every client that I have um, before I put their makeup on. So this is one of the steps I do as well. So after that, I like to go in and moisturize. And one of my new favorite um, moisturizers that I've fallen in love with is the Lumi de V Matte moisturizer. So if you guys haven't noticed, this one's a little got some moisturizer in it, but um, from my traveling. Um, but these are packaged super nicely. They're all in little glass bottles, the Lumi de V. Um, this is a very high quality line. Um, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than the Skin Intelligence, but still very, very affordable when you look at the ingredients and the quality of what's in here. Um, this, uh, I keep this moisturizer in my kit because this is perfect for anybody with um, normal to oily skin. It's just going to make the skin set a little bit more matte. Um, in humid days like this, if you're in Wisconsin in the summer or in Texas, I know there's people on wherever, Florida, wherever it is where it's more humid and hot, um, this is perfect because your skin, it's going to help kind of control those oils and the sweat that's coming off so you don't get so oily and greasy looking at the end of the day. So the matte moisturizer, um, I love it compared to other matte moisturizers out there. The price point is really good as well. So um, this is what I've, I've been really setting all my brides and um, uh, bridal parties, mothers of the brides, grandmas of the brides, all of it with this um, just because of the weather right now is so hot. Um, in the winter time, I tend to go back to a little bit of a heavier moisturizer for more people with drier skin, but I keep this in my kit at all times. Um, so this is my new favorite moisturizer there. Um, the other thing I love to do is if the skin tends to be a little bit more dry, is I love to set it with a little bit of the Rosé Refresher by Lumiere de Vie. So this is like rose water. Um, it's got a lot more benefits. It's got biotin moist, bio moist, something like that. I don't always know all the names of the ingredients. I just know what they do. Um, and that product is going to, or that ingredient is going to bring the moisture back into your skin and help it last throughout the day so you don't get so dry. So for people, I like to use the mat and then I spray this a little bit over the top or in between um, the makeup. So the other thing I love is when um, I throw this in my purse, you could throw it in the refrigerator and on a hot day, you could just spray it over your face to cool you down, but it's going to help put the moisture back so your makeup lasts longer because um, there's two reasons why, which I'll talk about later too, but there's two reasons why your makeup usually will not stay on. It's either because you're too oily or you're too dry. And um, with this, this will help moisture, put moisture back in your skin, um, make you look young and rejuvenated and help your makeup last longer too. So I love to throw this in my bag. And sometimes at the end of the day or in the middle of the day, I just want to refresh and I just spray it on. And it kind of like just revamps my makeup back up and makes it kind of look a little fresher. So I love this and I love this for a little bit more drier skin. This is great for winter time. Um, but I, I've been using it in the summer as well for people that tend to have a little bit drier skin um, too. So I think, okay, just one more skincare product and then we'll jump into makeup. But I do, skincare is so important um, with what I do. So I just wanted to make sure to touch on it a little bit. Um, so I guess this product kind of falls into the prepping or the priming of the skin and the prepping kind of together. So kind of our next step that we're going to be going into. But this is the Lumi De Vie Pore Minimizing Serum. So this is going to be perfect for anybody that um, has a little bit larger pores, maybe oilier skin, um, maybe some imperfections that they want blurred out. You're going to put this on your skin and it's kind of like a lighter color you can see, but it's a universal color. So once you put it on, it's just going to kind of melt into your skin, blur out any imperfections, kind of give you that no makeup makeup look. Um, if you've seen that trending, um, it's going to give you enough um, like I wore it today. I didn't put a lot of makeup on. So I just had this on during the day, um, and just did my eyebrows, put this on and I felt okay. Um, that I didn't need to have a lot on. I maybe put on a little concealer or something for my calls this morning, but I, I'm not seeing anybody in person. It's all on video now, but, um, so I just did that and I felt like I had a nice, um, kind of base on. Um, but what I love about this too, is it does act as a primer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about primers in a second and why that's a, an important step, but this is really good um, for 
priming your skin and getting your skin ready to put the makeup on. So that's kind of my little tip there. These are all the products that I've just recently within the past like six months really started putting into my kit. When I do my bridal clients, when I want that long lasting look um, and just really focusing on setting the skin and prepping the skin. I think those are two important steps that kind of get skipped. Um, and yeah, so those are, that's what I love about those, but jumping into priming. So I'm going to jump in here and show you guys, um, a couple, um, primers. I'm going to go over these things fairly quickly because I know you guys want to get into the techniques and tricks and all of that. I mean, these are all tricks, I guess I'm telling you guys too. Um, but I already prepped my skin into my foundation. So this stuff, I'm just going to kind of walk through, but then when we get in a little bit further, I'll actually go step by step and kind of show you some different techniques um, with the makeup and with the eyes and things like that. So the first one, this is the Complexion Perfection Primer. Why it is so important to use a primer. Some people use primer, some people don't, um, but why I believe it's so important to use it is you really want to set that skin up for success. So think about an orange and an apple. So an orange has kind of like pores in it almost. It's going to have more of that bumpier, um, exterior, so to say. And when you put a primer over an orange, it's going to give it more of that appearance of an apple. So more of that smooth appearance. Then think about when you go to put on foundation over it. If you put a, a foundation on an orange with all those pores, it's going to kind of sink into those grooves and ridges, right? Just like on your skin. If you don't put a primer on, when you put that foundation, it's going to kind of set in all those different areas. So the more we can set and prime the skin, the longer your makeup's gonna last and the better it's gonna look throughout the day. And I do understand you guys, as I'm going through all of this, this is a lot of different steps. Don't think you have to use, do every single step I'm mentioning, because you do not. Just take one or two things that I'm talking about and start implementing them. And then pretty soon you'll be like, okay, maybe I'll, you know, I, I, I did a moisturizer and a toner and uh, and maybe a pore minimizing serum, but now I'm going to just, you know, do that first. And then maybe I'll jump to eyes, um, you know, in a month later, once I get used to that. So just add a few things in little by little, and it doesn't seem so overwhelming. And I can promise you, I can show you guys a look in that you can do in 10 minutes. Um, I'll have to do another one. I think I've done them on my Facebook pages and Instagrams, um, stories and things that just quick looks that you can really just I know people are busy and they have to get out of the house. Now we have a little more time in the house, right? Um, but nobody sees us as much. But um, just take a few things that you're learning and just implement them in. Um, but the Complexion Perfection Primer is going to be a very good lightweight primer. Um, you don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. Um, but I really like this one. It's really good for the skin. It's going to be good for um, pretty much all skin types. Unless you have really, really oily skin, then I'm going to show you this one here is going to be a little bit better or the pore minimizing serum as well. But the complexion does work on all skin types too. Um, Insta Smooth here, this is going to be another primer. But what I like to say about this one is think of this one as like your primer paint and this one as like your spackle. So you're filling in the cracks a little bit more. Um, if that makes sense, I like to use these, all these crazy analogies. But um, the Insta Smooth, I actually use both of these together on most people. Um, this one's going to be really good for filling in wrinkles. What I tend to do with the Insta Smooth is for clients that I have that have very deep, um, like smile lines here, I actually will put this in and kind of fill that in. So then when I do foundation, it will kind of glide over it and it won't set in it. So you won't, sometimes when you do foundation and I've noticed this on more mature skin is if you don't prime the skin correctly, it, it makes you look older than you are. And we don't want that. We want you to look younger and more um, youthful, right? So by prepping it and using products like this, it's going to set that and make you look younger and not older. And I do feel like, um, you know, I watch different things and watch how the makeup's done or watch TV shows or whatever. And even my boyfriend watched one with me and he goes, you know, it was a wedding show or something. And he goes, they look older than they are with that makeup on. And it was so interesting to hear his perspective. He sees me with makeup and doing all this stuff all the time, but has no idea what's going on. Um, but I'm like, yeah, you're right. They do. Um, you know, so it may be the way it was applied or the products that were used. I have no idea, but um, just thinking about that. So all those, any, any fine lines, wrinkles, I put this sometimes around the eye here. If you tend to get crow's feet before you put on foundation, you know, lines here, anywhere there'd be wrinkles, pores, um, this is really good. You can use it all over the face if you want to, if you have more oilier skin. Um, but I tend to just use this and kind of spot treat with this 
and then use this all over. So um, that's what I do on my clients. That's why I'm kind of coming from a place from today, you guys, because I know a lot of you um, are trying to figure out like what to do for the average person, but like what also, what am I doing for my clients and what am I doing for myself? So I'm coming at it from kind of two different perspectives there, but these are my two favorite primers. Um, like I said, the pore minimizing serum is awesome as a primer as well. Um, you don't need all of these things. Um, start with one um, and see how it works. You can always add that, add something else in or try something different next time. I always say, you know, every, honestly, these primers would probably last you anywhere from a month to two months, if not three. So depending on how much you're using um, and how often you're using them, but they do last a very long time. I would say they probably at least last two months for you. Um, so every two or three months, if you try, just try something different, um, you'll probably like it all. I do. I just like to change it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of the face prep. Um, now we're going to jump into eyes a little bit. Um, and I'm going to start with eyebrows, which I already did my eyebrows, but I'm going to kind of show you guys some tips and tricks with these um, and what product I love to use. And I was just, um, let me get my brush out here. I was just in the salon and there was a couple people and I started doing eyebrows on everybody um, because they're like, I need eyebrows. I need eyebrows. So it was kind of fun as I'm coloring here, I was going around putting eyebrows on everybody, but um, it is funny. It is fun to see how much it really does change your look. But I think a lot of people get scared away with eyebrows because they see people do them so drastic and dramatic um, and they don't have to be that way. And what I love is this is the essential brow kit. So this is my loved and used and abused kit here, but I'm going to show you, it comes with two powders. So one that's a darker brown, one that's like a light medium brown, and this is going to be a wax. And I'll show you what to do with all of those. So what I love about this is it's pretty much good for almost anybody, unless you have, um, you know, really red hair or something, you might want to get something custom made, but otherwise this is really good for just about anybody. Um, what I like to do, it does come with a little brush typically, a little angle brush. This is mine that I have in my kit, it's a bigger one, um, but the brush that comes in here is really good as well. So just feel free to use that one that's in there. Um, what I love about powder products when it comes to eyebrow products is they're forgiving. So if you're just starting with eyebrows, I tend to use a powder product. You could even go and use a matte eyeshadow. Um, that's going to give you a similar look. It's not gonna stay on quite as well, um, but it's a good way to start. So um, make sure it's matte, make sure it doesn't have shimmer in there because you don't want glitter in your eyebrows, but make sure you're using a matte powder and you can apply it this way. So when you're applying your eye, brows. Um, I tend to, I have fuller eyebrows naturally, but there are spots where they're kind of not filled in quite as well. Um, so I do have to fill them in every day. Um, but what I like to do, this is kind of the rule of thumb when I tell people on where to put their eyebrows and how to put them on is you want to start, you can grab like a brush, a pencil, whatever you want to do, and you'll want to line it up to the side of your nose. And of course, this is going to be a little bit different on everybody, but that's why it's going to work with your eye shape. So you're going to set this here and that's where you're going to want to start your eyebrow. So you don't want to start it too far over and you don't want to start it too far back. So you want to start it, line it right up here. Um, I tend to go a little bit lighter in the front um, when I apply it to the eyebrow, but you can do it however you want. What I, then I like to do is I like to, my hair's in the way here. Um, I'll move it over to kind of the angle it this way and that's where you're going to end it. So right kind of where your eye ends and kind of like if you were making like a winged eyeliner and bringing that out, that's where you would end your eyebrow. And then for rule of thumb is usually where your pupil is when you look straight out into the mirror is where you kind of want a slight arch. Um, so that's kind of how you get those brows. And honestly, when I do eyebrow waxing, that's kind of how I do it um, as well if I have to kind of reshape them. So Kind of the same idea. I do recommend though, if you can find a really good eyebrow waxer, if you get them waxed. Um, and if, cause like for me, I haven't got them waxed in a very long time, but um, that kind of gives you your shape. So if you can have them kind of create your shape, it will make it a lot easier as well. So what I usually do for myself is mix these two colors together. Um, for color wise, if you're a blonde um, or lighter colored hair, I would say go at least one or two shades darker than what your hair color is. Um, I like mine a little bit darker, so I go even a little darker than what I am. And now I have pink hair now, so if you can see in my brain, I guess I can't do pink eyebrows. Maybe I could, I don't know. Um, 
but then if you have darker hair, black hair, brown hair, you'll want to go a shade lighter. So you don't want your eyebrows too dark. That's kind of how I um, work it with that. So um, yeah, so then I mix the two together. I do a little bit of both. Now the wax here is going to come into play with people like me that have very bushy brows. If you want to keep them, um, you know, in place, I can use a, um, let me grab this a little spoolie to kind of put them in place. I like like crazy eyebrows sometimes. So I'll actually brush them up in the air and kind of give them kind of a wild look, but um, it's kind of fun. So um, you'll see that I see it more on the runway now, a little bit more of the bushier eyebrows. Thank goodness. Cause mine are very bushy. So I'm, I guess I'm back in trend now. <laughs> um, but then this, this wax here, you could either do that and kind of just put it in and get them, get the product to lay better. Or you could actually mix it and make more of a pomade. Um, once you get kind of used to using the powder, if you wanted a little bit of a thicker product, you could mix it together. Um, you'll see other products on the market like pomades and pencils and all different things. They all do kind of the same thing. Um, it's just going to be what, you're, what you want to apply, um, how you want it to last. You know, it, it, there's no right or wrong when it comes to makeup. I use products. I've done these before and I was using, you know, showing you how to use different products um, you know, that you would normally use on your eyes, on your lip, you know, whatever it is, you could use it everywhere. There's no right or wrong. Try it, see if it works. And if it doesn't just don't do it again, but if it does, Hey, you just found a cool new hack to use. So, um, that's kind of what I say, just play around with it. Um, now's the perfect time to play around with makeup because we're not going out as much. So play around with it, have fun, do something different. Um, try colors you would normally not try. Um, yeah, it's fun. So, um, this is the eyebrow kit. That's kind of how I put those on um, and why I like to use powder um, as well. So I'm going to pop that over there. The next thing I'm going to jump into here is my eye base. Just give me a second here, guys. I don't have a big enough table. I need a bigger table, apparently. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is prime my eyes. So this is the eye base that I like to use. What I love about this is if you can see, it's like just like a creamy texture, but it almost has like a powdery finish. So it doesn't, it's not sticky. I've used other eye bases that were sticky. And then like my lid was like sticking up there and I didn't like it as much. So um, this one I love because it is, it has, it goes on creamy, but has a powdery finish. Um, so I'm just using like a little flat concealer brush to apply it because this is the stuff out of my kit. So I'm working um, with sanitizing and keeping it sanitizing clean. Um, so I put it on a palette here and this is just how I apply it. You could use your finger. Um, the one thing I do, I do personally sometimes use my finger when I'm doing my makeup with my stuff. Um, but the one thing you do have to remember when you're using your finger for anything is that you're, whatever's on your fingers, you're putting on your face. So actually that reminds me, I should, I wash my hands before this, but use hand sanitizer, wash your hands before applying any makeup. So that is like a big, um, what I do every time I want to make sure my clients see me wash my hands and have hand sanitizer on before I start them at all times. Now I'm even going the extra mile and wearing gloves, um, which I kind of actually like, and I'll probably continue to do, um, when I do makeup. So, um, just remember that anytime you touch your face with your hands, like now we're hearing don't touch your face, the oils on your fingers, even if they're clean, um, anything is going to go onto your skin and it could um, kind of change the way the makeup applies on there. So um, just keep that and remember that when you're doing this. So I'm just going to add this eye base onto my whole entire area of my lid here. Um, you honestly probably won't even really notice. I have like a mirror over here and I'm going to look in there at the same time. So um, you probably won't even really notice too much of the difference between my eyes. Um, the lighting is very right here. So hopefully that's not too bad. There we go. Um, so you don't even want to notice it really on too much. You just want it to be very minimal, um, but just enough. And you can put it on. What I like about this too is it's going to help the eyeshadow from creasing. It's going to help with any discoloration in the lid, kind of give it one uniform color. Um, and it's going to help the pigment show up better as well. Um, so that's another thing is um, why I love, and I'll go through a little bit of the 
um, palettes that I love too recently, but I love them because they are so pigmented and they have a lot of color to them. I always say very pigmented. And one time somebody goes, I don't know what that means. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I should really explain and not use my crazy words. But um, what that just really means is that there's color in it. Sometimes when you use eyeshadows, blushes, bronzers, anything, you're like scrubbing it, like taking a palette and you're like trying to get the color and you put it on, nothing's coming on, going on your skin. Um, why it's so important to have very pigmented palettes, eyeshadows, bronzers, blushes, is because when you have that, any skin tone can wear it. Um, so if you can imagine when you have a darker skin tone and you put on a product that you can, that is not as pigmented, it's not going to show up um, on any skin tone. So, um, that's one of the really cool things is that these products really do look good on everybody. Um, and that's very hard to find, um, as well. So put a little eye base on, I'm going to jump in with a little bit of eye shadow, um, as well. So these are a couple of my favorite palettes that I use. They're in my kit, um, too. So my go-to favorite palette is the Element palette. This one has been used and abused. It's been in my kit here, um, as you can see. But there's four mattes, four shimmers. They're kind of just like a very good, um, there's neutral colors, there's fun colors. You can do just about anything with this. So this is one of my favorites. Um, and then I have the Boss Babe palette, which I use on all, a lot of my bridal parties. So it's kind of fun. It's got a pop of blue in there, but then some gold. All of these are mattes, all of these are shimmers as well. So you got the mixture there. Um, love that one. And then um, I just want to touch on a couple <clears throat> palettes that are new. I'm talking too much. That's why I have aloe so my throat doesn't get dry. Um, but these new um, Euphora palettes. So one's an eyeshadow, one's a blush palette. I love these. Um, these just came out. And I'm really excited and I've been using them a lot on my bridal clients. I love these blush pink colors and even this yellow color and this like lavender as well. And then there's some dark charcoal colors too and a fun blue. So this is really fun for summery, um, beachy looks. Um, and then there's also a matching blush palette as well. So I love this one. It's got a highlighter. It's got some lighter colors to tone down the darker and even this fun yellow. Um, I actually mix some of these together. Um, and you can create really cool looks with this palette as well. And the other thing you guys is this is a blush palette, but I use these for eyeshadows too. So if you want a really good eyeshadow palette with really big eyeshadows and blush, this is, this is a perfect one because you can use it. Like I said, for anything it's powder. So use it for whatever you want. You could honestly probably mix it with something and make it into a lip color. I don't know. Use it for whatever you want. Um, that's what I'm telling you guys. Just there's no right or wrong. Um, but today on my eyes, I'm going to be using my new favorite palette, which is the Viva Talia, Talia palette. Um, I just ordered, this is my one that I have in my studio, but I ordered one that was actually signed by her. She did a partnership with us um, and uh, she was at our last convention when I was there as well. So it was fun to see her and meet her. Um, but I did get one that had her, has her signature on that I have in my studio, which is kind of cool. So this is an awesome palette. Why I love it is because there's some really fun colors if you can see here, but then it also has eye, eight eyeshadow and then three, like a bronzer, blush, and a highlighter. So I'm gonna use this one today to kind of show you guys a really quick fun look with it. So like, I think I was kind of going through um, the questions that I was asking and somebody had mentioned that they really wanted to learn some eye colors and or like eye techniques because we're not able to we have to wear masks and that's all you can see. Um, so yeah, so unfortunately that's the way our world is right now, which is fine, but we need to find some fun ways to really enhance and brighten um, our eyes and make it fun so people notice. And it is funny because I now working in the salon, working in my studio, people notice my eyeshadow way more than they used to because um, that's all they see. So instead of going to these, I love lip color too. And that's honestly, I was talking with my boss and that's one of the most sad things. I'm like, we have no lip color, um, anymore, no lipstick. So, um, now we have to go to eyes. So we're going to learn some new stuff with eyes and that will be just as fun. I promise you guys. So I'm going to grab a couple, um, 
brushes here. So I'm going to use like four different ones. What I love is um, there's a really nice eight piece motives brush set um, that has everything you need. It really does in there. And then just, I think the only other brush it doesn't have is the um, foundation brush and possibly the bronzer brush, but that one might actually come in there too. So, um, but for eyes, it has just what you need in there. So I'll kind of go over, um, these are the ones that are, I believe are in there just about. So we will stick with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just head in with this light brown color here, which is called Sass. So it's going to be my transition color. I'm going to use a big fluffy blender brush. Um, one of the key things with eyeshadows, I say this all the time, the darker the color, the smaller the brush, the lighter the color, the bigger the brush. If you want to blend something out, um, then you want to use a big fluffy brush. Um, oh, I was just reading the chat. So um, you can use a big fluffy brush to blend it out. If you want more detail, you're going to want to use a smaller brush, just like if you're painting. So just think of it that way as if you're painting, um, you can use it that way. So I'm going to take this one and kind of just put a little bit in there. You won't need a lot. I do notice when people do switch over um, to this line, you end up using probably more than you need. Um, but I'm just going to find the crease of my eye. And sometimes if people have more of a hooded eyelid, um, you'll just want to go right above that or... Um, or if you want to do it right in the crease, it depends. You can kind of play around with it on your own eye and see how it um, works. But I'm just going to use windshield wiper movements and go back and forth. Um, why I love um, the a transition color is because it's going to blend everything together. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, you don't really see it because it's under all this other eyeshadow. But really, it's really keeping everything and blending it together. And honestly, you could just wear a transition color, maybe a little shimmer on the lid and you would be good to go. Um, so I put that on. I'm going to go in next with a um, more of a detail brush. I think this is the crease brush. So it's going to be more tapered and a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go in with this darker brown up here, which is called Hattie and dip this in. And I'm actually just going to go right in that crease. Again, just a little bit lower from where I did that. I'm going to go directly in there and just go same movements back and forth with this. So I tend to, um, I think it's funny because I used to do different makeup eye techniques and now I've been doing a lot more like this. Um, don't ask me why, but I tend to bring it more in the crease and then sometimes I'll make it a little smoky and put it in the corner, but sometimes I just leave it. Um, so this is just kind of what I do. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong. I would say when, when in doubt, blend it out. So just get a big blender brush and just start blending it. It's going to kind of mesh together. Use a little bit and you can always add more product. Um, that's kind of my other key point too. So I'm just going to put this on this side and just kind of go back and forth. The other thing, don't I always do this on myself too, is I'll kind of sometimes just pull the eye slightly. I know you not really tight because you don't want to like pull any, um, make your skin wrinkle anymore, but um, I do tend to kind of hold it. One of the things I was taught when I was actually learning how to do nails, which I've kind of used with my eyeshadow, is when you are painting something to have your hand resting on something because it's going to give you more stability to move it. So I think that's why I keep my hand here and I can rest it against it and then move it back and forth because it gives me more control. Um, because if you can see, I'm kind of like holding my hand against there. So um, I don't know, something I picked up on somewhere down the road. And um, so I'm just going to go in with this one and just blend that a little bit more. Um, this fluffy one, if you can just clean it off and then just keep using it in between and just kind of blend in all the colors. Perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is go in with um, this isn't called the eyeshadow brush, but it's a little bit flatter. Um, if you can kind of tell a little bit there and I'm actually going to use, I think I'm going to use this one. It's called heat. It's kind of like a pinkish up here. It's kind of a pinky gold, but you could use this color, you know, this gold, you could use a blue. Um, when you get an eyeshadow palette, you guys, I always get this question a lot. It's like, what colors do I use with which colors? 
And when you get an eyeshadow palette, they're all meant to be used together. So there's no right or wrong way or way to place the eye eyeshadow. Just play around with it until you find what you like. Um, and like I said, you know, you might not want to try stuff out and then go out in public, but maybe try it at home. I personally think it's very um, relaxing. Like right now, just doing my makeup, even though I'm going to go and take it off and take a shower when I'm done and it won't go anywhere. It's just fun for me. Um, it's kind of like my therapy. Um, I'll do it. But even if maybe you don't enjoy it quite as much as me, but just kind of try it at home and kind of try some different things out. Or if you're not going anywhere, people aren't going to see you and just see what you like, see what you don't like um, as well. But I'm going to add this on the lid. So when you're using a glittery shadow or a shimmery shadow and you want to keep the shimmer in the shadow, what you'll want to do is kind of press, um, press it in there, but then you're going to want to press it on your eye as well. The more you move it around, it's going to kind of dilute the glitter or the shimmer and it's not going to be a shimmery, which is okay if that's what you're going for. But if you want to keep the shimmer and keep the pigment there, um, then you'll want to kind of press it down. So even if you're using more of a brighter colors or you want it to be darker, if you press it down, it's going to put more of the color there. But then if you use it and blend it, it's going to blend it out and make it a little bit lighter. Um, so I'm just going to place this right on the lower lid on the bottom. Oh, I like this color a lot. I wish you guys could see better. I'll post a picture. My lighting's not the best in here because I left my other um, light at, home, or at my studio and I'm at my house right now, but um, at least you guys get the idea. I'll post a picture of it when I'm done too so you guys can see. So if you guys have not already, go like my Starstruck page. You'll get a lot of like cool tips and tricks too. So if you can kind of see, I wish this wasn't as right here. Let's see if we can move this a little bit. We'll see. I don't know. Might be a lost cause. But just remember if you're using more of that shimmer, you'll want to just pat it down on the eye like that. And then you'll keep the shimmer there. And then, um, like I said, if you want to blend it out, you can, you know, use the eyeshadow and blend it out. What I've been loving to do with eyes lately, like I was saying, is use kind of a darker color in the crease and just do like a glittery or a brighter color um, down here, like more of the pastel colors, like the blues and the purples and the pinks and, or like the champagnes. Um, this technique that I'm doing, you don't have to use a pink or a brown. You could use champagne or taupes or browns or um, whatever colors, gray is whatever colors you use, you can do the same technique with it. Um, or even like the smoky eye look, whatever that looks like, you can use different um, techniques. Now, if I wanted to make this a little bit more smoky, and a little bit more deeper and darker, what I would do is kind of make, bring in this darker brown color that I put in the crease and bring it in into a V right in the outer corner here. Um, so just kind of bring that in and it's gonna give it that kind of smoky illusion. Um, I, for some reason, like I was saying, just kind of like to keep it a little bit higher. I don't like to bring it in as much. Um, the other thing it can do is close the eye a little bit. If the smoky eyes, if you have smaller eyes, it can bring it and make it look smaller. There's different tricks um, you can do, like you could add a little bit of brightness here or even in the waterline here to brighten and um, open up the eye if you have smaller eyes and you want to brighten them. Some people want to bring their eyes in and make, there's so many different things you can do, you guys. So if you have specific questions or um, on different things or maybe your eye shape or your face shape or whatever that is, just feel free to shoot me a message. I'd be happy to work with you. Um, and find you the right techniques and products and all that good stuff um, as well. So the next thing I'm going to do with this fun palette is I'm going to take, um, I think I'm actually going to, because people were saying they wanted some fun things with their eye, is I'm going to take this flat detailing brush and I'm going to take this blue color up in the corner. It's called Splash. And like I said, I'm going kind of dramatic, but you can do this with any colors. So let's say you wanted to open up your eye. Um, I'm going to place this right in my tear duct in the inner corner of my eye. You could do a fun pop of color there, or you could do, um, you could do like a, a champagne color or a shimmery color um, and kind of brighten the eye or maybe just even like a white. Some people even put a little white eyeliner there if you want it to be a little bit brighter and more awake. Um, I'm going to do blue because <laughs> why not? So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna bring it, kind of go up a little bit and around. So just that fun inner corner. I don't have mascara on either, so it looks kind of weird until I put mascara on, but um, this is, I kind of just follow it on the inner water line of the eye and then I'll go up a little bit as well. 
And then if you need to blend it a little bit or like dilute it, you can use a blender brush, like I said. This is gonna be really pretty, this blue color with blue eyes. You could use, um, you could use any color, but I just think it's kind of fun to add that little pop of color. Um, I, like I said, I will take a picture so you guys can see better so it's not so crazy. Um, the other really cool thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to make any eyeshadow into eyeliner. So what I love is I have every single makeup product you can probably imagine um, in my kit or at my house, but for a lot of people that's not the case. So I like to take anything I can and kind of compact it and teach you know different ways to use the same product. So one of the things I love is to take um, setting spray, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit too, but you can actually shake this up and spray it on an angled brush and you'll be able to use it on and make any eyeshadow an eyeliner. Um, I just have to find my brush here. Here it is. Um, and then you will, so if you just spray it on here like this, and then you can take this color. So I will use, um, I'm gonna actually use this frisky color. So it's kind of this like cranberry color right here. And I'm going to kind of dab that in the color. So I got this wet. So it's gonna make it a little bit brighter, but it's also going to have it last um, all day as well. And it's gonna give you more of that softer eyeliner look and not so harsh. So I'm just gonna put it underneath the eye like that. What I love is if you're nervous to use eyeliner, this is a great way to start because it's gonna be very natural. You can use very light browns, you could use darker browns, you can use blacks, you can use whatever you want or color like I'm using. Um, but you can just use a setting spray. You could even use water and then get the shadow wet. It's not gonna last you as long, but it's still gonna give you more of that, a little bit wetter texture. So it's gonna glide on really nicely and stay on okay, but just not as well. You might notice a little bit of fallout um, with it, but oh, I like this color underneath here. You guys wanted a pop of eyeshadow, so I'm definitely <laughs> popping the eyeshadow. Um, so that's my trick with that. Now the next thing I really like to use is I'll do a little bit of eyeliner on the top. Honestly, lately I haven't been doing a ton of eyeliner on the top. I tend to just do it on the bottom and then do like a heavier mascara. So then my eyes kind of pop that way. Um, but today I'm gonna use this Lux Precision Eyeliner. Now this isn't something I normally use on clients because it can't be sanitized. So this is my personal one. Um, if clients want to use me to use it, then I'll have them purchase their own so I could use it on them the day of. But what I love about this is it lasts so long. So I'm gonna put it on my hand here. And then I'll show you how it just lasts a very long time. Is this the black one or the brown one? Oh, the brown one's this one. Okay. So the other tip with this one is it, if once it runs out, if you take the end of this and just flip it around, there's another end on the other side. So you'll get double, not double the use out of it, but a little bit longer. Um, but one of the keys when doing upper, I'm going to do it on my upper lid. Um, and that's what I like to use this one for. It's a felt tip liquid eyeliner. Typically on the top, I'll, I'll use more of a liquid liner and then on the bottom I'll do a powder. But like I said, you can do liquid on both, you know, whatever you want to do, um, powder on both, however that looks. But when I do um, it on the top and it, even if I want to do a little bit of a wing, um, this is what I typically do. So I typically start kind of in the middle and work my way out and then fill in the inside. But what you're going to want to do is use very small strokes um, and be just very precise, but very small and slow. Um, I found when I'm doing eyeliner and I'm still perfecting this because it's taken me a long time to do this because um, it is a harder um, application. I feel like eyeliner is a little bit trickier. Um, some people are really good at it. One of the things I did during quarantine, because I felt like I wasn't as good as applying eyeliner and like a wing, I wore it almost every day on myself and I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it until I felt like I was getting good at it. Um, so like I said, you'll just want to start in the middle here. And I like to just, some people don't like to pull their eye. I do because I, um, I don't know why, but I just do. Um, some people don't 
like that. Now, the one trick I can tell you, if you have eyes that tend to maybe come down a little bit or droop just a little bit, um, you'll want to have the eyeliner to go just slightly above that. Um, and when you've put on false lashes as well, you'll want it to be a little bit above that. So then it kind of brings your eyes up and away um, if you're looking to get rid of that. So um, what I love about makeup is that anything you can add or um, you know, enhance or kind of t get rid of certain things on your face as well. Um, so I don't know. I love makeup. It's kind of fun that way to really enhance. So I just put that on really just small strokes and went up a little bit of a wing, but I would say that I just go really small strokes starting in the middle, work my way out and I'm doing it as, as low to my lid as I can and just kind of doing very small, slow strokes um, with that. So then, um, let's see if I can get my wing to look similar. I don't know, we'll see. The more I play around with it, and I'll try to get them to look like identical. Then I'll ha I'll like just keep adding more and then they're way too big. So what I tend to do is just do it, let it sit. And then if I need to go back, I'll go back and add or hopefully not take away, but more maybe add to one side um, and just do it very small and then work my way up because even on clients, I feel like eyeliner can be tricky because you usually do it last and you don't want to have to redo the whole eye, right? So um, I just do very small strokes, very small. So that's my tip with eyeliner. I'm still personally working on it. Um, but like I said, I just kept doing it, doing it every day till I felt like I was comfortable with it. Um, and that's my tip. So practice makes perfect progress, progress. Practice makes progress there. All right. So. We're having fun with the eyes. We did the eyes. I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of mascara on before I forget. Um, I'm gonna use this um, eyelash curler. So for some of you, this is probably like a foreign object, um, but for others, they probably use it every day. Um, when you get an eyelash curler and this one in general, that you're gonna see there's like a little padding right here. So one of the things with eyelash curlers um, is you'll get probably an extra piece of padding there um, in your thing and you're probably like, what is that used for? But when you're keeping curling that, it's gonna press down on that padding and eventually gonna wear out. So when this one gets worn out and then you can replace it with a new one, but once that's worn out, you wanna just get a new one. Um, so these don't last forever, but they do last a pretty long time. Um, so just remember that because you don't wanna be doing metal on metal. That's why that cushion is there. So it's not gonna like break your eyelashes. So what I do is I just kind of keep my eyes partly open and just go very slow to make sure I'm not pinching my eye, right? We don't want to be crazy fast. And then I just kind of pump it a few times with my hand, depending on how curly you want. Now, typically my eyelashes, I don't curl them every day um, when I want more of a dramatic look. Um, I'll curl them or I'll put fake eyelashes on, but my eyelashes do have a fairly good curl um, with that, but um, without it. So I'm going to go in next with a little mascara. This is the Motus Fiber Lush. So what I love about um, this mascara is that it is a fiber one-step mascara. It's made with nylon fibers, so not fiber glass. Um, I know I have some clients that were like, my eye doctor told me I'm not allowed to use um, fiber mascaras. And I was like, well, it's probably because of what's in normal fiber mascaras. So be very careful when you're looking at fiber mascaras and what the ingredients are, because there are other mascaras that actually contain fiberglass, um, obviously little pieces, but that can scratch your eye um, and your cornea and things like that. So we don't want that, but this is made with nylon fibers. So it's very safe for your eye. You're not going to see all that fl flakiness or um, you know, falling off throughout the day. It's going to last fairly well. It isn't waterproof, but it is water resistant. So I actually can use it for my brides um, as well because it stays on pretty good. But the key thing with eyeliner, this is a very tapered brush. So I really do like this because you can get really, you know, into the corners and around. So I love that. But 
the thing with eyeliner, what I like to recommend people is do the, if you do the bottoms, do it first. So look kind of down a little bit and put it on your bottoms first. It's weird looking in the camera there. Um, but why I say do the bottoms first is because if you do them first, if you do your top first and then do the bottoms, you look up, your top lashes will hit up on your eyelid and then you will have black all over your eyelid. So if you do the bottom first, then you won't have that unless you have very long eyelashes and then they just hit the top anyway when you do the top, but we'll do that. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit on the top. You guys are still with me here, I'm glad. Apparently I can't talk and put on mascara at the same time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And I have my mouth open. I don't know how many of you do that. So you can see the difference here. I'm just gonna put a little bit on. So what I like to do is do one coat and just really kind of shimmy it from the base up. And then what I'll do is go in with a second coat and just kind of hit the ends of the la mid to ends of the lashes. Now, mascara, I don't care what mascara you use, but any mascara needs to be replaced every three months. <laughs> um, it can go bad. Um, now, maybe you can get away with four months if you're not using it every day, but remember, Every time you open and close this, there's air going in, there's bacteria from your eye, there's bacteria around going in there, and then you're closing it really tight, so then it sits in there. So just remember that you don't want to keep this for a year or six months or a year or longer. You want to re be replacing mascara. Mascara is probably one of the main things that you want to kind of keep replacing. For me, it's never an issue. I wear it every day. I usually, this one's almost gone, so I'll just throw it away and get a new one. Um, my ones for my kits to go really quick because I'm using them so much. Um, but make sure, and you're not, make sure you don't leave it open. Make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't dry out, all those things. But um, that's my tip with mascara. So I'm just going to go over a couple things with um, foundation. And then we'll kind of, and then setting in a little bit of the face, but it shouldn't take too long. So we're coming in here quick, you guys. Um, but I know you guys wanted to stick on for the eyes. So I hope I gave you some great information with that. And I will have it recorded. So if you want to, if you want the copy, I'll try to get on my YouTube page, or you can just shoot me a message and I'll get you the copy of it too, if you want to look back on it. But when it comes to foundation, I really want to talk on a couple key things when it comes to looking for the right foundation. Um, like I said before, I already put mine on. So I had wouldn't save you, I'd save you the time from in the board, boring of me putting it on. But um, when you're looking for a foundation, what you wanna do when you're matching the color of it is you actually wanna match the color to like your chest or your neck. So there's so many people, and definitely this time of year, um, my skin, I wear a lot of SPF in my makeup and my skin, and I do try to on my um, like body as well, but I, my skin always has a little bit extra, my face, I'm sorry, has a little bit extra. SPF, so it tends to be a lot lighter than the rest of my body. So when I do, you know, I don't want to match my foundation to my face. I want to match it to my neck so it matches all together. Now the lighting in here is kind of goofy, so it looks kind of off, but I do promise you guys it matches pretty good. Um, today I actually just used the Illuminating Foundation um, in Light Honey, I believe. Um, I really like that one because it is made for normal to dry skin. It's going to give you more of that illuminating look. It's going to be a little bit more moisturizing. Um, if you tend to, like, I love it for the winter times because if you tend to have more drier skin, it's going to be a little bit more moisturizing. For more mature skin, it's really nice because it looks um, very natural. It's going to give you that natural finish. It's going to be very um, soft. It's got a medium to full coverage. You can do it very light. You can add a little bit more if you want more coverage. So I like the versa versatility with it as well. Um, but when you're looking for foundations, you want to think about your skin type. Is it dry? Is it oily? Is it normal? Is it combination? Um, then what do you want it to finish? What do you want it to look like when it's finished? And I know a lot of people, this is probably overwhelming because you couldn't imagine there's so many different parts of foundation, right? But there are. 
There are a lot of different bits and pieces, and that's why people can never find the right foundation. It is the hardest thing for people to find because of the skin tone, the type of foundation, how they want to apply it, all these different things, right? Um, so when we're looking, you want to look um, for things for your skin. The other thing is you want to look for foundations that your skin can breathe through. So there are a lot of foundations out there that are made for um, not everyday use that are going to be a little bit heavier that are made for more of the photo shoots and the heavier, you know, underwater photo shoots and things like that. And those are products you probably don't want to put on your face every single day. Now for the once in a while occasion, yeah, no big deal. Um, but if you're wearing things every single day, you want to make sure those foundations are good for your skin. You're not clogging your pores that your skin can actually breathe through it. So that's one thing with motives that I love is all the foundation, all the makeup in general, um, your skin can breathe through it. It's not going to clog your pores. Um, it's going to feel lightweight. Your skin's not going to feel like it's like suffocating when you put it on. Um, the other foundation I want to quick touch on is the mineral powder, mineral powder liquid foundation, I believe is the way you say it. <laughs> um, but that's going to be a little bit more of a fuller coverage. It's going to be better for oilier skin or normal skin. Um, you can use it on drier skin as well. It's a good overall foundation. Um, and it's the one that they first came out with and the one I first used on everybody um, pretty much. And then they came out with the illuminating. So now I have a little bit of a choice um, and I do love, love them both. Um, and they both work very well on everybody. But you know, if you have more of an oilier skin, maybe you want more of that matte finish. The liquid powder mineral foundation is going to give you that. If you want a little bit more bang for your buck, the mineral um, powder liquid foundation is going to have a SPF of 15 in there. It's also going to have a built-in primer. So it goes on very smooth and silky. I would still recommend putting a primer underneath to give you that extra um, boost and longevity with it. Um, but it's going to have that in there. And then um, it's going to set a little bit more matte. So it's going to go on as a, as a liquid cream, but then it's going to set as a powder. So it's going to last a very long time as well. Um, I know I have friends that use it that work outside or that waitress outside or whatever, and it lasts them throughout the whole day. Um, so that's a good one. Now, the last one foundation I want to talk about, there's other ones that we do carry that are very good as well, depending on what you're looking for. But what I personally love is the custom blend foundation. So if you're watching this and I invited you, or maybe someone else invited you, or if you're watching the recording, just go to whoever invited you and they'll point you in the right direction on which way to go. Um, but the custom blend foundation is actually a line of foundation that was custom made by Modus Cosmetics that us as distributors or as beauty professionals or beauty advisors, I should say, can use this and mix up your foundation, your cosmetics and get you the perfect foundation, the perfect powder, the perfect cosmetic, whatever you're looking for. I tend to do more foundations, more liquid, because that's the hardest thing to find um, for people, but I'm able to mix the perfect match the perfect consistency, the perfect coverage, the set, you know, how they want it to look when it's all set, um, all of that. Um, if they want to add in anti-aging, all these different things, we can add that in. So that's the way I would recommend going. It's so awesome on your skin. It actually cleared out my skin. And it's funny because I have been using, um, when you're a makeup artist and I have all the, this makeup and I have just been using what I have left over um, from my kit, I'll just use it when it gets like low. So I need to go back and mix myself a custom blend because that's what I had on for like the last year before quarantine hit and I ran out of it. And I'm like, ah, it's okay. I'm not really going anywhere, but my skin feels so much better with the custom blend um, instead of the old stuff I probably have that I'm using. But that is okay. <laughs> um, the other thing I want to quick touch on is the bronzer. So a lot of you asked about blushes or bronzers and how to apply them and which ways, you know, what's a good way to work with them. So um, I'm going to talk about, hopefully my computer's still working. <laughs> I got a little note up. So this is the Miami Glow Bronzer. It's got a little bit of shimmer. Sorry, the thing lights there. Um, a little bit of shimmer. It's going to be nice for just about everybody and every skin type, skin tone, whatever. It's going to give you that natural summer glow. Um, so I'm going to go in with a um, with an angled brush here, if I can find it. Here it is. So a contour angled brush like this, and I'm just going to go like this. Now my trick that I have is I actually most people would take this and probably tip it up like this and go this way, but I actually go like this because 
I never want that bronzer to come too far down here. I want it to stay farther back there. So I tend to hold it like this. And then once I want to blend it out, I'll flip it around and kind of blend it. But when I'm applying it at first, I want it to go this way. So I'm kind of weird that way. I don't know if that's a trick or if I'm just crazy, but um, that's what I like to do. Um, when you're applying it, you want to find your, you know, kind of find where your cheekbone would be or is. And you just want to apply it right, you know, directly underneath there. So I just like to kind of pat it in. And then just kind of on the cheeks like this. You could do this with a darker contour color too. Um, but this color is really nice because it is just very natural. So I just like to do this and then maybe I'll flip it around and just kind of blend it in a little bit. The other place I like to do it is maybe just on the bridge of my nose here on the sides of it, up there where the sun would hit and maybe just like along my forehead here. So think about where the sun would naturally hit you and then um, just kind of add in there. You could smile and put it up a little bit. The one thing I love about bronzer is you could use it as a blush a little bit and kind of just give you that sunny glow. Um, I'm telling you, use a pore minimizing serum, put a little bronzer on, put your eyebrows on mascara, a little lip gloss or something, or maybe not anymore because we don't need it because we're wearing the mask, but you're good to go. Um, that's all you really need um, for your just like a nice quick look. Um, so there is that. I'm going to add a little bit of blush from the blush palette. No, from the, this palette here, I'm sorry, from the Viva palette. So my key tip with blush, um, which I never knew was a key tip until one of my clients told me, I did what you told me to do. I was like, I didn't tell you to do anything with blush. She goes, you told me to smile. So um, what I like to do is just dip a little bit and use a little bit because a little bit goes a long way. And then I smile. And then where my, do you see kind of where my cheeks are a little more pinky anyway? And they, just on the apples of my cheeks, that's where I'm going to put the blush. Because that's where it's normally where you would smile and that would be, now if I don't smile, you don't really know where that would be, right? But when I smile, you can just add it right here. So I just kind of will put it right, at, right on that little apples of my cheeks. But I just smile. It's kind of weird. And like when I'm doing, having my clients do it, I'll be like, smile um, while I put on your blush. But then every time when they stop smiling, it's right where it needs to be. It's not too far forward. It's not too far back. It's right where that natural blush would be on your cheeks. So that is my key tip with blush. Um, I'll throw on a little highlighter. Sometimes I like to do that just like right here above the blush, maybe on the bridge of my nose, maybe up here. That's just quick, 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 quick. All right, so the last thing is I'm just going to set it with some setting spray. So these are the two different setting sprays I love, 10 years younger, which is going to be more for that nice dewy natural finish. And then there's no more shine, which is going to be more of a matte finish. So depending on what you're looking for, both are awesome. It's going to depend on your skin type um, and the climate you're in. So when I was doing a wedding in Mexico, when it was like 90 degrees and humid, um, and I was doing the makeup at nine o'clock in the morning and the wedding was at four or five, I used no more <laughs> shine setting spray. And the girls at the end of the night were coming up to me like, how is my makeup on? Where do I get that? What's happening? And it was right when I first started using this line, um, probably about like six years ago or something, five years ago, I don't know. They just, the bride and groom just had a baby. So they've been together a little bit, but, um, and I was like, I really hope this works because I really haven't, I hadn't personally tested it. I didn't have any testimonies. So it's fun to use it, get those testimonies, get people. Um, so I'm just gonna spray this on not talk while I spray it, but what I like to do is spray it in the T and then an X so it covers the whole face. Um, so there's that. And then I'm just going to finish it up with a little bit of the Motive Celeb Lip Shine. Um, what I love about this is it's not super sticky. Um, and honestly, right now, I don't think that you need a lot of lip color. So this is kind of nice. It just gets, it keeps it moisturizing, a little shimmer. Um, but I have created a my list with all the products too. So if you're wondering what they are, I can send those over to you. And I'll let my hair is all wet with that. Um, but yeah, those are some of my tips and tricks. So I kind of want to just wrap it up here so you guys aren't on here super crazy long. Um, but please reach out if you have any questions. I'm kind of looking over the questions here. Um, the other thing that I think 
which I think I talked about a little bit before I probably started recording, is um, I'm drinking Ultimate Aloe. So one of the really important things when it comes to skincare and makeup is that it doesn't start on the outside, it starts on the inside. So there are a lot of key products or key things that I do and that, um, that a lot of others in the industry do to help um, kind of keep your skin looking refreshed and renewed. And Ultimate Aloe is one of those things. So that's what I'm drinking today. It's gonna help my throat too, because I'm talking a lot. Um, and then also um, the Pure Collagen is another one. So what I'm personally doing in my studio, um, once things are up and back and running and people don't have to wear masks as much, I'll probably be launching it fairly soon and get things ready, but I'm gonna have a beverage bar um, for my clients so they'll get to try some beauty cocktails. I'm making the menu on the list, so it's gonna be really fun. Um, but I'm gonna be giving out Pure Collagen shots and, um, and Awake Energy shots too. So there's going to be some shots and cocktails, but not the alcoholic kind. So it'll be kind of fun. But this is one of them that I'll be showcasing. So this is um, hydrolyzed collagen peptides. There's going to be two different forms of collagen, I believe, in here. Um, lots of science behind this product. There are so many amazing results with the skin and the whole joints and body and everything um, that people are finding. But this is one of the things that um, is fairly new that I've been working with. And I've seen a lot of great testimonies and results with it. Um, the other thing that is so good is the digestive enzymes. So I'll be having these as well and information on these at my studio because those are such a key part to your skin because your digestion and all of that plays a big key part on your skin. Um, and the aloe and all that stuff is soothing and it's going to help break down the foods and help your body um, you know, combat that so you're not, it's not coming out through your skin. A lot of times when your body is detoxing or is toxic, it's going to come through your skin. Um, you're going to notice breakouts. Like I was saying, when I have dairy a lot, um, I notice I have a lot of breakouts. Now I'm just getting the mask me from the mask. And so I have to use a little bit of some more treatment products on that. But when I had these, you know, breakouts from my chin from dairy, it wasn't because, um, it was just because I was intolerant to it and I couldn't digest it and it was coming through my skin. My body is trying to tell me something's not right. Your body can't digest it. So I finally caught on and knew that's what it was. So what I'll do is in case I try to limit as much as I can, but there's cases where I do have ice cream or I do have dairy and I'll just have some digestive enzymes and that will help where my face doesn't break out so much and it helps with a lot of other um, internal things as well. Um, just the digestion and not the upset stomach and all these different things. Um, but it doesn't, it also like a big key thing is my skin doesn't break out. I would get like thick, thick, thick acne, you know, on my chin from that. And I talk to a lot of people, um, you know, clients that have skin issues and they go to dermatologists and all these things. And it sometimes is, I'm like, well, what did you eat? You know, what did you eat lately? Can you do like a log of that or different things? And um, so, yeah, that, that to me is, um, is a key part, it plays a big part. So I did wanna to touch on that a little bit um, with that, but I just wanna thank you guys so much for coming. If you're watching this live or recorded, whatever that looks like, thank you for taking time and watching it through. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, I Like I said, if I will give out anybody that had friends on or that are watching that, I'll give out some giveaways to and reach out to you so um, as well, but thank you for coming. And I did wanna mention that I will be doing another event next Monday um at 6 30 p.m and it's going to be called salon strategies so which is going to be focusing on the motives overview so it's going to be more for beauty professionals or anyone interested in looking into um the beauty industry and how that kind of works and how um what clients are looking for what we're doing what we're doing as a salon and studio in oshkosh as well so um let me just check through my questions and answers here perfect um lots of great stuff so thank you guys the Talia palette is great, yes. Um, the powder contour is always a little bit easier to use as well. Um, powder products typically blend a little bit easier. They're easier to use, so start there. Um, collagen has made a big difference in my skin. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, so many great things. Red hair, use the amber brown pencil with the brow kit, awesome. Love the toner. Oh, you guys are so sweet, cool. So thank you guys for being interactive and shooting some messages in here as well. So I thank you guys so much for being on. 
Um, and I hope to see you at the next event. And I hope to have these a little bit more often, at least once a month, and we'll cover different topics. Um, this is kind of just the beauty basics. So maybe next time I'll, you know, touch on a specific palette or technique or whatever you guys are looking at getting out of it. And I'll take some of the questions that you guys answered in the registration and see if I can make those into their own little events as well to cover deeper in on each of those things. Because I just kind of skimmed the surface of everything. So um, I added a little bit more than probably the last beauty basics that I did. Um, a little bit different. I want to change it up a tiny bit in case there's people that were on both. Um, but thank you guys again for coming and taking your time. And I will have a my list of everything we use. Feel free to reach out or I will reach out to you if um, you are on and want that as well. So you guys have a wonderful night and I look forward to seeing you all in person soon, hopefully.